Welcome to Garden Plants with Jim Putnam. Let's talk October Magic Orchid Camellia. October Magic Orchid is a Camellia sasanqua. Camellia sasanquas tend to bloom in the uh, fall months. So here we are in the middle of October and it's just coming into almost peak flower. I think I'm a week or two away uh, from this one being in peak flower. This one was introduced uh, by Bobby Green. He's been on uh, my Hort Tube with Jim Putnam channel before. If you wanna go back and take a look at uh, uh, video with him uh, sh showing off many of the camellias that he's introduced. He's also introduced a lot of other plants into the trade as well. So um, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting meeting the uh, plant breeders. This one was selected because it has a really compact habit and kind of a conical shaped growth habit. So you can fit this one into a narrow space. Many, com lots of camellias get really, really big and Bobby uh, and his family have have been long term, uh, long time uh, plant breeders of camellias, trying to kind of shrink them and fit them into the landscape a little bit better. And this one is one of their big successes. This one you can maintain between four and five feet in height, but it'll stay kind of narrow, uh, more like three to four feet. You can see the very vertical growth on it. It's not going to stop at four to five feet. It can get bigger than that. It's slow growing though, and uh, but and so easily controlled around that four to five feet in height. October Magic Orchid, like any other Camellia Sasanqua, is going to be an evergreen. Beautiful dark green, shiny foliage on this. And whether it bloomed or not, it would be a great landscape plant. Uh, th these have pink buds. And as they open, they show off a little more white. So it becomes a pale pink at the time that they're fully open. Um, each flower is kind of edged in pink. There's some difference in each flower. So you'll see some that are a little darker pink and some that are a little more white. It appears to have several different flowers, uh, flower colors on the same plant uh, as it's doing that. Again, uh, slow growth habit, um, which I really, really like. These are hardy in zone seven to nine. And if you're in zone seven A, uh, I'd probably spring plant it uh, just, just to make sure it has a season under it. Uh, these are best in part shade. Uh, Camellia sasanquas will take more sun than Camellia japonica. Camellia japonicas have the larger leaves and definitely re almost require uh, more shade. Uh, these are more adaptable um, in the sun. The spot that this one's in is coming into the sun. It's shady. Uh, the house faces east. This is the back of the house. So there's a period of time in the middle of the day that this one's absolutely in full sun. It has no problem with that whatsoever. Although I wouldn't give it 15 hours of full sun. This is more like three to four hours of direct sun. So where would you use an evergreen uh, shrub like this that grows tall and narrow? There's a heck of a lot of uses for it. Uh, this is a great accent plant, just one of a kind like we have it here. Uh, it's super, super showy when it comes into flower. And then when it's not in flower, it just kind of fades into the background with the beautiful dark green foliage. And we put some other summer flowering annuals around the, uh, around the base of it. Works great in a mixed border. If you've got a shade screening, uh, you can put your larger shade screening plants in the back of it and this, you know, this out in the front of it and it will give you some color in the fall. Makes a great foundation plant in a spot where your windows are a little higher or the corner of a foundation on your park shade side. Works good in a container. I'd probably do that in zone eight or nine. In zone seven, uh, they're more vulnerable to the uh, roots freezing on them. This gets planted in a well-drained space. This is not a plant that you want to put in a... Uh, in a particularly wet spot. If it's in more sun though, it will require some more water. So that's something you need to think through. The spot we have it in here, again, it's only in the sun for three or four hours. It's up against the foundation. It happens to be an area that doesn't get particularly dry in our landscape, but again, it's not wet either. So it got planted in our clay soils with a little bit of compost. It was mounded up slightly and it's only been watered a few times, honestly, since it's been in the ground. Once camellias are anchored into the landscape, they're extremely, extremely drought tolerant. I see some of the best looking camellias I ever see are on old abandoned houses where nobody's actually maintaining them. When it's initially planted, uh, check on the water maybe once a week. I, what I do is I drown and forget kind of watering where I, you know, I water it very heavily almost until the soil rejects water and then just check on it a few days later, dig down with your finger um, and see if it actually needs water. 
Uh, again, letting it dry slightly between waterings will encourage it to root into the surrounding soil. I only fertilize my shrubs and trees once a year, and so sometime in February or March, this will get an application of organic fertilizer, and that's it. Other than that, it's got mulch under it. It's underplanted with several other ground covers and shrubs that you can see that are planted nearby it. All of this is done so that when that sun comes up over the house for the four hours it's in direct sun, the roots aren't scorching on it. Pruning uh, is kind of an important thing to know on uh, camellias. Uh, camellia sasanquas, again, are blooming in the fall. They start setting these flower buds back in summer. And so you really want to, if you, any pruning you do on it, like I've got this crazy limb going north on it right here, I wanna take that off. I'll have, I, I need to do that I need to do any pruning I'm going to do on it before June. So sometime in the spring, any time in the spring, you can prune it. And then you need to leave it alone because it's got to have time to flush back out, reset flower buds, and then do this in the fall. If you prune this thing too late in the summer, you'll be losing flowers uh, almost certainly. And this one is just absolutely loaded uh, with flower buds. And uh, um, it's going to put on a show here for the next uh, couple months. Again, here we are in mid-October. They're pretty pest resistant overall. Camellia scale can be an issue, uh, especially if you're tucking one up in a corner. Uh, sometimes you'll see a little more scale insects on the bottom of the leaf. Overall, they're not that big of a deal. They t uh, not not that big of a deal. Tend to be deer resistant. Uh, so really, just a super low maintenance plant that you just get a lot of bang for the buck. It's evergreen, shiny foliage blooms at a time of year when nothing else is blooming. Uh, I haven't even mentioned that the pollinators absolutely um, love some of these single, uh, uh, on, on warmer days when they can fly here in October and November, you'll see bees in these uh, single flowering or semi-double flowering camellias. So that's a, that's a benefit as well. So there you go. This is October Magic Orchid Camellia from the Southern Living Plant Collection. Thanks for watching.